We're going to start off with a story here on the UFO report. This one comes from a guest we had just a couple of weeks ago, Daniel Otis for Vice. He is a freelance journalist who is a contributor to Vice magazine. It's a report out of Canada where he says, just after midnight of September 20th, 2016, that he received, not he, but the Royal Canadian Air Force squadron of CF-18s received a call from Vancouver air traffic controllers about vital intelligence sightings approximately 20 minutes earlier. And it was brought in by an Air Canada Express aircraft that, that uh, you know, they were trying to figure out what were these strange lights coming off the coast and, and off the mountains. Now, this was happening, the three red lights, about 3,000 feet above him, according to the Air Canada Express pilot, and traveling slower while 25,000 feet over an uninhibited stretch of British Columbia's northern rugged coast. So we're trying to figure out what is happening and with that. So I don't know. We need more reports out of Canada, I think. We really do. All right. Uh, John Hudson, we, we seem to yes. be logging. Can you hear us okay? I can I can hear you now. All right. We got you now. All, All right. right. But, All but right. you know what? We can't start our segment without a little bit of music here. Hold oh, on. yeah. Well, that would be kind of you. That would yeah. be kind of you. Oh, that's sounding good now. Sounding real good. So instead of me telling the UFO reports, we're going to bring in the fedora wearing John Hudson. That was weird, man. You yeah, had everything set weird. up properly. We could see you. We could hear you. You couldn't hear us, but that's okay. Nonetheless, we still get our unbiased UFO report, my friend. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So well, now, first off, well, please don't no, Sorry. Go ahead. No, you please. We we, we enjoy well, no, I, I was just going to say, I was here. just going to say, uh, I was just going to say, thank you everyone for sticking around and, and especially in light of our recent little problem and and uh, and once again a, a head blowing night of Butch. So uh, so appreciate everyone sticking around and hopefully we'll uh, bring up some good conversation for you. Are you doing well tonight, Dave? I am doing great. I am having a good night. My laser beams are working in my front yard. Your laser so, beams. Yes, I've lit up my my trees in my front yard with. Christmas laser beams. Ah, and and very, I think very it's cool. A, and I'm going to be honest with you, John. I think it's a good way for me to attract the aliens. Really do. It, you just you want to make sure you're attracting the right kind, you know. Yes. By the way, riff raff. Before we start this segment, we should we should uh, be of note here. Nicole Sackich and Grant Cameron just a few weeks ago had their brand new book out called. Triangles, aliens, and messages. If you want to hear my black triangle story, they've included it in there. I believe it's at page 82. Page 82. It's a good Christmas present if you're into the black triangles. And Nicole and Grant are just so talented. They absolutely deserve, you know, all the accolades they get for that book. Not just because you used my story, but it was a collection of amazing encounters that people have had. So now, Dave, in your in your specific story, did you did you did what you see indicate to you at all it was a human made craft or not? Did oh you, no. You, no. There was no, there the first the two I've seen two. There was no sound on either of them. Okay. The the first one was way more creepy than the second one. Way more creepy. And that was because earlier that day. I had called some friends up. This was a weekend, Saturday night. I had called some friends up and I asked them to come on over and have a beer on the patio. And we'll have a little fire because I got a little fire pit on my patio. And we'll watch some UFOs fly over. And we saw two that night. Including the black triangle just a couple thousand feet over top of my house. Mm -hmm. Weird stuff, man. You know, even knowing what I now know, even having seen what I've now seen, if one of my neighbors, even one that I really like, said, hey, John, come over tonight after dinner, have a drink. There's going to be some UFOs flying by. We can watch them as they go by. I honestly, Dave, I, I wouldn't know what to say. I really you go, wouldn't. I you mean, go like, for I that would... beer. You go for that beer. 
oh man, I just I don't know. I don't know. Crazy. What I would say. Crazy. Did you get an opportunity to read Daniel Otis's article? Uh no, I did wait, sorry, which one was this? this well, was we'll, the... we'll we'll talk about this one on Wednesday. It's the one okay. I sent you. All right, what do okay. you got for us tonight? Well, um, well, actually, it was kind of funny because um, I, I've had a, a whole night of, of technical challenges because the the notes that I had prepared for you guys um, miraculously vanished. But I would say probably one of the best issues to talk about right now is um, the DOD is actually responding to the criticism that we are seeing about what their maneuver might have been. And if you if you think about it, let me just give you guys a little bit of, of a quick background just because this has gotten kind of layered in that essentially, you know, you had you had all these, you know, um, uh, sequentially, you know, uh, set up um, amendments, right, that were going. You get up to the Gillibrand Amendment, which is kind of the, the one amendment to rule them all. And she's kind of a, adopted as much as she could of all the other ones and sucked it into hers. And so she's got this kind of, you know, dominant one. And, you know, we're all kind of like, ooh, ah, this is nice. This is good and everything, right? And there's actually good stuff in it, right? It's actually well written. And boom, the DOD pops up with a, you know, basically a press announcement and saying, hey, look, we've set up this new organization and it does kind of most of the stuff that's done in that thing, but not really. We're just, we're just letting you know we already did it. Like, it's no big deal, you know? And it merely made it look like they were like trying to do a, 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 a you know, a, a, a trick. I mean, they were, they were trying to pull, pull, you know, a, a, a fool everyone. And the fact that basically in a press conference room, they were actually specifically asked this and had to specifically respond to the fact that are, is this organization that they are standing up specifically designed to actually, uh, uh, you know, basically obscure and 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 basically undo. And it was interesting. What the reporter said was, and this really kind of ticked a nerve for the guy. Said it was basically something along the lines of to undo the will of Congress. And and he got very testy. And um, and I'll, I'll include a link to it in my notes. But um, but what I what I find what I find so interesting is that one is that this would escalate to a point. That in a in a DOD press conference room, someone would actually call out specifically Louis Elizondo and Christopher Mellon, and the fact that it was it was it was it was something that they'd written that you know that was you know was at the focal point of all this, right? So for those two names to be brought up, for for the DOD to be called out for basically trying to obscure or or slow this down, and then for them to actually respond to actually acknowledge it as a valid complaint and respond to it in the way they did wow i'm 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 kind of blown away like i i was really i i guess i was kind of naively kind of hoping that essentially you know what the dod was really doing was they were they were trying to get set up preemptively and they were they were planning on merging and working together and they weren't really trying to obscure and and squash and now, based on this DOD response that I saw, now I'm thinking I was being too too optimistic. Now I'm thinking that that they really were trying to do some squashing, and they got caught. And now they're trying to play all, oops, sorry. I mean, I don't know. Did you see it? I did, and I was surprised that they were basically telling people, "Don't pay attention to Elizondo. Don't pay attention to Chris Mellon. They don't know what we're talking about." And the other point is this is something, and look, I have been heavily questioning Luis Elizondo and Chris Mellon over the years. John, you've listened to us long enough before you joined us to know that I haven't been the most friendly person about this. But I'm telling you right now, my mind has changed. I really do believe they are on our side, to an extent. On our side, to try and get disclosure or some sort of confirmation out there. But here's the thing that really uh, kind of got my mind going, John, was, was the fact that they also stated that they don't feel that the public or the government officials have a need to know about the information they are collecting. We do not yeah. have a need to know. Now, if I'm American, which I'm not, 
that is a very, very powerful statement. That, to me, is the second missile over the bow regarding the military-industrial complex telling elected government officials, you don't rule us, we rule you. You will do what we say. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I think it's, I think it's pretty fair to say that that this, that this constitutes the, and we've actually seen some pretty strong pushback at certain points in this whole process, and I would say that this constitutes the most aggressive, and um, and and obviously done out of fear, um, of anger flash that we've seen out of the DoD through this entire process. I, I don't think we've ever seen them push back this hard. This is this is this is them. They're they're they're. I I think the Gillibrand Amendment caught them off guard. It I did. don't know how that happened, but I think it did. I think it really caught them off guard. But you know what? If I'm in the mainstream media in the U.S., this is a major story that is brewing right in front of every American, and it is public, and it is getting zero press. And, and you, like, like, forget the UFO part for a second. J just look at all the pieces of the story. It's right. a good story. It's, it's a, a fun story, story right? <laughs> it's like, dude, come on, like, just get your teeth into it, <laughs> dude. This is a dangerous story. Huh? It's a it's a very dangerous story, and it's telling a lot of American people, hmm. you don't matter. Yeah, you don't you don't run the show. Your vote for whoever becomes the president doesn't matter. Whether you're Democrat, whether you're Republican, whether you're Libertarian, or whether you vote for the Spaghetti Party or whatever party is out there. All right? I am... If, if our American listeners tuning into this take anything from this show tonight and this little commentary, please do this. All right? This is now the second time in less than 10 days that the military has told elected officials to shut up. Number one came when they fired the salvo about putting the bill forward and we'll take care of the UFOs. You government officials don't need to ask us anything about it. And number two comes now where they're saying, number one, Lou Elizondo, Chris Mellon, anybody preaching for UFO disclosure, don't believe in them. And number 2A, the public and elected officials will not receive reports from the military regarding UFOs. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. And, and, and it put it puts people in it puts a lot of other people in interesting positions, right? Because you take someone like the DNI, right? Um, now the DNI, she's you know she is uh, she reports um, directly to the president. She does not. Um, she's not within the DOD. However, several of those who report to her are from the DOD, um, and so she sits in kind of like this middle ground. And it'll be interesting to see how she plays this because. Um, you know, she could end up being in that um, in that peacemaker role um, of mitigating some some real calamity there, because, um, you know, if, if she, for example, decides to use some of her resources to push for more disclosure, it might force the DOD's hand. The flip side is that the DOD can get her to be to begin operating on their behalf, then we might really actually get into a situation where things start getting really shut down. But it's more than that, John. It's the, and, and I agree with you. You're 100% right. And people may say I'm overreacting on this. But this is about the military-industrial complex. It really is. We are seeing the military-industrial complex right now flex their muscles over UFOs. They flex their muscles towards the public and the elected officials themselves. This is, this, I, I don't remember any time in my life that I've, that I've uh, been following politics of this ever happening. 
You know, there's one other case, and and it's sad because I I've been I've been looking for it for like three years and I can't find it. But I watched it live on CNN, and it was like in the it was like in the late '80s, I think it was, and it was a it was on the on the invisible bomber. So this was basically on the B two long before we knew it was called the B two, and basically this guy's testifying in front of Congress, and 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 the you know the Congress was you know you know you know why wouldn't you answer my question? He's like. Because uh, I I answer to a higher authority, and the guy's like, "What authority do you answer to?" And the guy's like, "I can't tell you. That's because I work for that higher authority." And basically, just like, and just shut down this whole congressional hearing. I mean, it was just like it was flabbergasting. It was like it was it was awe inspiring. I still to this day can't find it. But to me, it's that it this is that kind of level stuff. Well, you're exactly right, buddy. You're exactly right. John, we're going to continue this in the after show on our YouTube channel, but uh, we're going to get to Shirky Poo's news right about now. Thank you so much for a great unbiased UFO report. Sorry about the tech difficulties there, but you're awesome, buddy. You're you're one of the best out there, and thank you for being part of our team. 